Greetings, everyone. Well, today we go way back to 1939, when a little film you may have heard of called The Wizard of Oz premiered. Yeah, The Wizard of Oz was a pretty big deal when it came out because it was one of the first films to use full-blown Technicolor. So you, you can imagine just how spectacular that must have been at the time. The same year, by the way, Gone with the Wind came out, which was the other big film film that was one of the first to use full-blown Technicolor. Pretty big deal to have that degree of color in a movie in 1939. I mean, color wouldn't become the standard until almost, what, like 12 years later, roughly, like in the 50s? Wow. Um, so they were definitely ahead of their time. So not only ahead of their time in terms of that, but also just in terms of the production value. Holy moly, does this movie ever look good? Like even by today's standards, uh, matte paintings, models, costumes, sets. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Um, and apparently it was something of a troubled production as well, just because they were they were so ambitious with it, uh, of trying to do all these amazing visuals and whatnot that... Uh, it, 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 there was just a, a, a lot of different production problems. There's like urban legends that have sprouted up about it, like one of the munchkins supposedly hanging himself, and you can see him in the background in the forest, his body hanging there. Like morbid, crazy, twisted stuff. But uh, I remember originally uh, Buddy Ebsen, who of course uh, you, you probably know as Jed Clampett from uh, the Beverly Hillbillies, was going to play the Tin Man, but the um, the makeup that they were using was apparently incredibly toxic, and he inhaled some of it and was hospitalized and could not actually do the role. So they hired another actor to uh, take over. And uh, but yeah, anyway, a wonderful, wonderful film. I'm sure it's a significant part of almost everybody's childhood since the 30s. I mean, it, it got countless re-releases in the theaters. And it was um, shown on TV all the time. Now, originally, uh, the first home video version I had was this one here, which was the 50th anniversary VHS release. And it was pretty cool, actually, because not only did it have the movie, but it also had some extras. Oh, my God, extras on a VHS tape. Yeah, it had a couple of featurettes at the end and... Um, uh, something about the Academy Awards that it won as well. It had like some footage from the Academy Awards that year. So pretty cool stuff to uh, to have some extras on there. And it was in like slightly oversized uh, packaging. I think there was a booklet that came with it as well. So it was a really nice VHS uh, uh, edition, which uh, sadly I no longer have. But uh, it was one that I inquired, uh, inquired acquired. It was the um, selection of the month for the uh, Columbia House Video Club, which I was a member of at the time. And uh, I saw that, I was like, oh, Wizard of Oz, like, I don't have that, it would be great to see it again. And uh, and this was a beautifully restored version as well, I mean, it looked as good as VHS could look, essentially, but uh, I had never seen it look that good before. And it's one that I had meant for years to pick up on a better format. Like, I meant to get it on Laserdisc, never did. Meant to get it on DVD. There's a lot of great DVD editions, never did. There's been a few Blu-ray editions. Actually, there was this really gorgeous 70th anniversary edition here, which uh, I know some of you guys have. Um, and uh, I, I really wanted to get that one, but I missed out on it. You can, <coughs> you can still find it out in the wild if you, if you search around a bit. You, know, you can find it online not too, too expensive, but uh, I may grab it at some point just because it's such a beautiful edition. It's got lots of cool pack-ins and stuff, as you can see. So the edition I ended up getting was actually five years after that one, the 75th anniversary edition, where we have The Wizard of Oz 3D. Yes. <laughs> so uh, when they originally prepared this for high definition, they actually did an 8K scan of the original negatives, basically because, I guess, because they didn't want to ever have to go back and break that original film out of the archives again. So they did an 8K scan. So something that would stand up through numerous future high definition formats quite easily. And I guess having that super high resolution scan meant 
they could do a post convert of it in 3d fairly easily because they had just ridiculous amounts of detail in the image to pull from for the 3d post processing now i of course don't have a 3d tv i don't have any means of watching 3d stuff right now but uh, i've heard that the post conversion is actually quite good on this so i definitely look forward to seeing uh the, this classic film in the third dimension but uh yeah, so anyway, this is similar to the 70th anniversary set. This is actually quite a snazzy box set. So let's, uh, let's check it out today on A Closer Look on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Yeah, sorry, I, I should have done all that after the titles, but I got kind of carried away because The Wizard of Oz is awesome and I get excited when I talk about it. So let's head on down to the black box and we'll crack this sucker open and take a look at The Wizard of Oz 75th Anniversary 3D Edition. Okay, here we go. The Wizard of Oz 75th Anniversary Blu-ray Boxed Set 3D Edition Limited Edition Oh, yeah, um, this was a highly limited, very, very limited edition of 220,000, <laughs> of which mine was number 82,433. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think limited edition, like Twilight Time, 3,000 pieces, you know, Shout Factory, 2,000 pieces, uh, you know, Synapse Film, 6,000 pieces, like that's limited, but 220,000? That's like the, the population of some small countries. Anyway, so originally, of course, in the packaging, it had this big backing on it. Just uh, turn it around for you here. I'll let you see. There you go. Shows all the contents there. Very nice. All right. But, of course, I have long since taken that off. There you go. Just a uh, plain backing. It did get a little bent somehow i think that was actually when i took it off i accidentally bent it like mere seconds after removing it all right so we take a look on the side we got uh, it's all kind of hollow holographic uh it's not like just plain white it's got this kind of see te technicoloriness to it see that very nice so nothing here just some more more holographicness can you see that a little bit that's hard to pick it up anyway and then here Oh, you can see it you can see it there but on all the sides this weird sort of holographic white it's weird and then on the front if we see if we uh can get a look at it you can see kind of the uh the concentric rings around the star there are all kind of holographic as well the the limited edition numbering yeah i'm not gonna never mind you can, you can see it just zoom in on it anyway uh very nice very classy box very sturdy so let's pop this sucker open here and take a look inside. Oh, look at that. Immediately we're greeted by Judy Garland and Toto. <laughs> so here we got a production timeline hardcover book. Very nice. Um, we'll just we'll take a quick look at that actually. So we just take a look here. Oh, look at that beautiful map of the marvelous land of Oz. Very cool, that is beautiful. That is really, really nice. And then a beautiful Technicolor print of the marvelous land of Oz. <laughs> Got Dorothy in the, where is this, the gumdrop forest? Something like that, anyway. It's been a, like a million years since I've seen the movie, so. Uh, there we go. Oh, and there's a, an ad for the book. There's a big, big honkin' 75th anniversary companion book that you can get if you like. Yeah, I loved this movie as a kid, and I, I've lost track of how many times I watched it. Uh, but yeah, very nice, uh, very nice book. Lots of beautiful panoramic pictures, and it basically gives you a timeline along the bottom of the whole production of the movie. Uh, it was a bit of a troubled production. They did have some issues. Uh, a lot of people thought it wasn't going to get finished, but uh, they persevered. They came through, and we got a classic. And there we got some early costume tests for Dorothy. Very nice. 
Yeah, this is a beautiful set. I mean, both this and the um, some early Scarecrow tests. Early Tin, tin Man tests with Buddy Epson, actually, as uh, the Tin Man. <clears throat> so, yeah, very cool. But um, great to see all the behind-the-scenesness of this. I mean, this... This was quite an ambitious production for its day. I mean, and, and I think that's one of the reasons why it holds up so well even today is they just put so much into it, like into the production um, design and everything. It was just phenomenal. And uh, it's still quite impressive today, even, you know, 80 years later. But uh, there we go. So anyway, I mean, I could just go through this whole book. But needless to say, lots of cool production uh, stuff in there things about the premiere and and whatnot got full color pictures black and white pictures lots and lots of cool stuff so very nice indeed margaret hamilton as the witch of course classic <clears throat> all right so anyway beautiful book you will not be disappointed with that the uh, 70th anniversary edition also came with a big book actually a bigger book i think all right, so if we go back into the box set, we have, oh, another book. Well, let's check out this one. Hold on a second. So this, we have, what's in this book? Oh, lots of photos and movie posters. And nothing. It's a diary. It's a journal. You have your own Wizard of Oz journal. Like, <laughs> nice, heavy, hefty book. Like, come on, guys. I swear this was just added to give the set a little extra weight. Like, what a nothing insert. Like, seriously. It's a journal. Something you could get for, like, five bucks at Staples. Like, great. Great, guys. Don't, uh, don't hurt yourself with these packings now. All right, so... What else do we got here? So, let's bring the box back up. So, we take this uh, layer out, which basically is, is formed for the, the two books there. And then here, of course, we have the Blu-ray. Before we get into that, we have this, which is a Ruby Slippers snow globe, basically. So, if we... Uh, oh, try me. Hold on. Try me. Um... The try me button does not appear to be attached to anything. And, oh, the button, it, hold on. The button is, uh, hang on, I'll get it. I'll get it. The button was detached from the thing. And one of the cords is detached. Has this thing fallen apart? Hang on. <laughs> Great. Whatever it was, it's dead now. Hang on, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can. Uh, oh, hold on. I had it for like a second. Um, if we can just can't get the wires to touch. Eh. Well, you saw it for like a split second. It glowed, and it was amazing and magical. <laughs> Typical cheap pack-in junk, I swear. Uh, well, that was disappointing. Anyway. How does this even go back in now? There. <laughs> Beautiful. And we put that there. Yeah, it's... Basically, this needs to be soldered in order to function again. Oh, well. That was fun to think about for a couple minutes. Um... All right, uh, what else do we have here? We have this, which I don't know what it is because I didn't pay much attention to the backing. So, oh, that's actually this way. So if we open this up, what do we got here? Some kind of jewelry, I'm guessing, or... Oh, actually, this is really nice. Check this out. So we got the three items that, um, that um, Dorothy's companions got. We got the badge of courage from the lion. We got the... The heart that ticks. Well, it's not. It's actually just a pendant. But you know, and then the, uh, uh, and then the graduation documents for the scarecrow. 
Very cool. That's actually uh, great. Oh, I see. They're little, they're little brooches. Yeah, so you can wear them if you want to. So whatever your favorite character is, you can wear their symbol. Very nice. All right. And then finally, last, but most certainly not least, yeah, believe it or not, they include the movie in here too. It's Who would have thunk it? So uh, this is basically, uh, you know, just, I guess, similar to the standalone edition you would get. Um, got quite a few different discs here. So we got the 3D edition. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, uh, this was all uh, scanned in 8K. So they had like a super high resolution scan that they could do the post-processing from. I've heard that the post-processing is actually quite good on this. Whenever I get a 3D TV, I'll uh, definitely be checking that out. We got a Blu-ray of uh, the feature film and special features. We have a second Blu-ray of more special features. That's pretty cool. Got the DVD edition and then a flipper disc of presumably special features. So, very cool indeed. So, what uh, what all does it have for special features? Here, let's uh, let's just let you look at that, and I will uh, see what it says on the back here for the special features. So, holy moly! Okay, over sixteen hours of extras. The five-disc 75th anniversary collection includes Blu-ray, 3D, Blu-ray, and DVD versions of the film. Over 16 hours of extras. All-new feature-length documentary, The Making of the Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Discover how this unprecedented production overcame the odds to become a movie classic and an integral part of American culture. Commentary by historian John Frick with the film's cast and crew. Documentary profiles of director Victor Fleming and the life and times of original Oz author L. Frank Baum. MGM and the Lion Roars, a six-hour award-winning studio chronicle. Wow. So is that like a six-hour documentary about, like, behind the scenes at MGM? Cool. The TV movie special, The Dreamer of Oz, starring John Ritter, Annette O'Toole, and Rue McClanahan. So we get a TV movie, too? With John Ritter in it? How freaking cool is that? Sing-along feature and much more. Exclusive collectibles. 52-page hardcover photo book. That's cool. Hardcover journal. That's lame. Spark Deluxe Award pin set from the Noble Collection. Uh, Ruby Slippers Sparkler Globe, which falls apart as soon as you take it out of the case. Frameable Map of Oz and Frameable Photo Card. Yeah, uh, th this edition is actually, I don't know, I, I just grabbed it because I wanted a Wizard of Oz edition, and I, I don't think I actually noticed just how vast the extras actually are on this set. That's actually pretty freaking impressive, I gotta say. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna have like a Wizard of Oz weekend at some point and just dig my way through all that stuff. So, all right, let's put all this back together here. So we got that, and... Uh, and we got this, and we got this POS, and, uh, hold on, get in there, okay. Then we put, uh, put this on top. Actually, I think it would be better to do it that way. Yeah, that makes a little more sense. That, that looks a little more correct, I think. So, then we get, uh, Put the journal in there. Like, it's just a big, heavy, hardcover book of nothing. Like, come on. After all the rest of the awesomeness of this set, that's all you could come up with? All right. And then we got... Um, let's see. We'll put the photo... So this is the beautiful, frameable photos, which I agree are totally frameable. These are gorgeous. Very nice. Go get a dollar store frame and put those in there. And then we'll lay down the... Uh, <coughs> Uh, the ribbon, put the book in, lay the ribbon over top, cover it all up, and there you go, ladies and gentlemen, the 75th anniversary edition of The Wizard of Oz. Uh, you can still find this fairly cheap um, online, as I say, I mean, for a limited edition, it wasn't very limited, so if you like the looks of it, feel free to grab it for yourself, I don't think you'll be disappointed, it looks like a pretty freaking awesome set.
So there you go. I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, a pretty nice uh, set to adorn your shelves with. And uh, if you grew up with The Wizard of Oz like I did and love it like I do, then th this set is a real treat uh, for young and old alike. Alrighty, that is it for me to you for this week, folks. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you again next week for another closer look, whatever it may be. Tune in next week to find out. Uh, until then, thanks for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, and I'll see you next time. Sayonara.